Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was really going to say something. I, I know. I was, like, I was just kidding. <laughs> Deep breath. Welcome back to Unsolved Mysteries of the Res- Reservation. Um, so we added a new member. Introduce yourself. Oh, okay, I didn't know if you... <laughs> I wasn't sure. You looked at me and I was like, oh, well. Yeah. New, uh, my oh name's Yehola Tiger. Um, what do you want me to do? Like, what my favorite hobby is? No. <laughs> Long walks on the I like beach. To jog. <laughs> Tell us how you like your fry bread. No. <laughs> Not as crispy. Mm. I'll say that. Not as crispy. I know. Um, I got a, a, a message from from Russell, and uh, you know he asked me to join join the pod. You know, and I'm just like, well, what an honor. You know, because the first couple the couple episodes that you guys did, man. It, and it, to use in Chris's word, king. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd reach out and then get you on. Because you had some really good stories at that live event we did. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, those are just, you know, a lot of those stories are just, you know, I, I grew up, I guess my a little bit of my background, I, I was raised, born and raised in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and you know, out of Hastings, good old Hastings, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, I, a lot of my childhood was spent, you know, uh, at Merle Home Park, and my grand, grandpa lived out in Park Hill, and, you know, he's always running around out there, but uh, I'm glad to be on, you know, it's it's a definitely an honor, for sure. Heck yeah. Mm. Man, glad to have you, for sure. Yeah. Always looking for more stories, more input. Yeah. We need a Hulk on our native avengers team <laughs> oh so oh okay you're our hulk all right i guess i'm thor <laughs> <laughs> my new my new movie's coming out <laughs> love and thunder love and thunder heart yeah. <laughs> uh so i guess today we're gonna on this episode we're gonna talk about what we say Water monsters. Water monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Entities. Water monsters. I don't know why I said almost oh, a lake uh, monsters. Yeah. I just thought it was a good idea because uh, summertime, everybody's hitting the lakes, all the area lakes, mm-hmm. fishing. And I tell you what, if there's one thing I don't do, and that is swim in the lake. <laughs> I, don't, I don't step foot in that lake because I know better. Yep. I'm too nervy. Especially out there, especially the certain lakes you go out to out here. Yeah. Can't even see five feet in front of you. Yeah, you go yeah. out to uh, Oklahoma Aquarium, mm-hmm. and you see all those things that are in that water. Yep. No way. Snapping turtles. Uh, and- yeah, they had, a giant one. they had a giant one in there. Yeah. Wow. I don't know <laughs> if it's still there or not, because we went to that. Dang, like, when we first moved here, I think. And they had this giant alligator gar. Mm. Yeah. And they had a giant snapping turtle. But you couldn't even see it because it was in the rocks. And then you had to really look. And when finally, I think they were feeding it, and it like came out it like Godzilla <laughs> just crawling out of that space. God. So, oh, my God. <laughs> Dang, gamma out there. I know. Moto <laughs> Dragon, but the water. Man. <laughs> that leather back. I wonder where they got that. Probably just along the river, I guess. I wouldn't want to be the one to wrangle that thing. That's crazy. Because I think I saw the little plaque there. I think that said that thing weighs like 100 pounds or something like that. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah. That was like a serious unit of a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I always like um, going to those aquariums and even like to the zoo. You know, you see uh, the original water monster, you know, those alligators. Mm-hmm. You know, Creeks and Seminoles, we, we got a different look. At that alligator, that alabutta, that's what they call it, you know, and which means alligator. And uh, with Creeks and Seminoles, they used to have a clan like that. I don't know. You don't hardly hear nobody claiming that clan anymore. But I do know there are very few still left out there. And uh, that thing was was always sacred with, the, with our people, you know, and in actuality, you know, uh, they were the ones that took care of our funeral arrangements way back when we were in those old countries. And so, you know, uh, 
I can remember working down there in Florida, you know, in, in the early 90s and, um, you know, seeing those things, man, they can be pretty scary. I remember uh, uh, I was coming out of my apartment and uh, there was looked like a big old tree fell in the yard. And I was looking at it, and it just, for some reason, I just looked at it, and it just had just weird vibe. And then I noticed it had an eyeball, and it was looking at me. And so I backed up and went back in my apartment, and I called my boss, and I said, I think there's an alligator out in front. And she goes, oh, that, that happens quite a bit. You call this one number, and they'll come out, and they'll wrangle it and take it, you know, deeper into those Everglades, you mm-hmm. know, and, and stuff. So anyway, she said, just go ahead and take your time, you know, come in when you can come in, you know, call those people and they'll come out. And sure enough, boy, I made that phone call and went, went too long. They came out and they shot him with the dart and I guess put him to sleep. And then, man, it took, it took one of those, uh, what we call like a bulldozer, pick him up, oh him my on, God. put him on a trailer and, take him off so mm. i went out there after they put him on that trailer and tied him down they said i asked them so what you gonna do with it and they said oh we're gonna run a few tests we're gonna mark him you know and, and then we're gonna go release him and so i thought wow that's pretty pretty crazy but i know down there you know people will get them in their pools or their ponds or their backyard and stuff like that so i don't know you know, I remember going to a function down there by Okeechobee Lake. And, man, you go, and at nighttime, you see nothing but eyeballs, you know, looking at you in that water. But, you know, those those, those Seminoles down there and those Miccosukis, you know, have cookout, you know. They just be, <laughs> and when those things get close, they talk to them, you know. That, that's what, you know. And uh, I thought, man, that's pretty crazy. I'm not going to sit there and talk to it. But, you know, because if that thing wanted to, boy, you jump up. You can't run, run from those things. Those things are quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, You'd be gone. Yep. So, you know, to me, that was like the ultimate water monster because, you know, they had stories about those things, you know, taking care of the dead and, and also their supernatural abilities, you know, that took care of things and, you know, uh, I know that was always really fascinating with me, but I know you guys probably got some other keen stories. <laughs> <laughs> Would you see that one they found in Claremore? Yes, I saw that. You know, and, and I had heard on the radio, uh, this was a while back, you know, they were t- telling me that those things are moving, moving up, you mm-hmm. know, to different locations, and you're going to start seeing them like in, in Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, you know, it's from those floods. Mm. Mm. And, you know, that always rained uh, memories to me, you know, because, you know, my grand- grandparents would always tell me, don't play in the flood water, you know, because those water monsters like to move. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. call those storms. If they want to move, they're going to call that storm and then they're that place is going to get flooded and they're going to move to wherever location that they want to go so just because you think these water monsters originally come from florida or alabama or georgia don't always mean that they're going to stay there if they want to move somewhere they're going to make it so Mm -hmm. they have those supernatural abilities to make it so you know and, and that's why they always said you know be careful talking about these things because you know they're going to hear you and they're going to just like spirits they're going to come come knocking you know and and they're going to cause you know great rain you know in, in those areas you know where they're wanting to move and i think about that sometimes when we especially here in oklahoma you know you see floods you know where it normally don't have floods you know and 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 things like that so you know like like we were talking earlier you know about being scared of getting into the lake when i was young i never even thought about stuff like that you jump in a lake pond river stream you name it 
But now that I'm older and any of my grandkids are around, I start freaking out because, you know, I think about, you know, what's underneath that water, you Mm -hmm. know, especially here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You know, Oklahoma has, you know, you got water moccasins and other entities. uh, 50 pound catfish in a hole somewhere. Yeah. (laughs) Crazy. Even like uh, you fall a lake, you know, you fall a lake, there's a lot of stories that the muskogees have of that lake you know it's a it's a man-made lake but you know uh when they were creating that lake you know i was always told that you know they flooded that area there was a ceremonial grounds that was there Mm -hmm. and uh now now that it's flooded you know you have still those remnants of those grounds that was there and I was also told that, you know, when they were flooding that area, they went by and supposedly told people, you know, they were they were getting ready to flood it. But, you know, you still had a lot of Muscogee people that didn't understand English at that time. Uh, you know, so when they flooded it, they didn't understand what these white people come by and was, you know, telling them. They just thought they was coming by, you know, just visitors or whatever. And then they flooded it and... You know, they got caught up in there, you know, and and so I was told, you know, that's why that you follow lake for other reasons as well is, you know, has a lot of beans in there, a lot of uh, supernatural things to do with that water. And every year you hear somebody drowning in there mm-hmm. or, or boat flipping over or you know they're saying that they see lights in the in the woods and or they'll hear things on the water you know there's a lot of stories like that down there in the Eufaula Lake and so you know you ask those uh, locals especially those creeks around there those Muscogee people they're going to tell you some eerie stuff mm-hmm. and it's not only about that water but also about those woods and even the roads that are around there that's leading up to that lake and you know it uh definitely is is a eerie thing when you get to hear those real traditional stories about that place and hey, what year was that that they they built that lake <clears throat> i think i know it was early 1900s I don't, I don't know exactly when but i know it was like maybe the 30s or 40s. so you don't you don't think that the Muscogee people that they, they didn't have a chance to go there and like pull those arbors out or pull no. that fire out. They just flooded it. Yeah, they just flooded because you know they didn't understand English. Because yeah. you know even at that time they were still pretty fluent. Right. And you know you had a lot of people that you know, even like my grandpa. You know my grandpa he didn't understand English, and uh, he spoke fluent Muscogee, and you know sometimes. To communicate with him, you know, you, that was what you you had to speak Muscogee. You know, his his kids would take him into town to help him do business, you know, and they would interpret for him, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and also read for him as well. It wasn't that he was, you know, he didn't know anything. It just he didn't understand English. You know, he was one of those that were from the... 1800s you know so i just that's insane to me to think that that's still there somewhere in the bottom of that lake that ceremonial ground that ring still there Mm -hmm. those arbors are still there i mean that's got to be there's even a cemeteries underneath there you know and 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 a church 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 building and you know it was just a community that you know got flooded so I i mean there's caverns down there i mean it's a whole mess of stuff in that in that area, you know. But you know, talking about you fall lake it kind of brings back you know memories for me. You know, just growing up, going down there, and and uh, you know, being with my family, and you know, something. You know, this is something kind of. You know, this is a story that I was told by my cousin. Um, it was her and a pregnant friend and the boyfriend, and they were swimming out there, kind of. In the shallow end, if you've ever been out to your fall lake, the shallow end and it just straight drops off, and it's like thirty feet deep. I mean, it could be as Whoa. deep as you know, it's deep. And she was out about 
right where the shallow end meets the deep end. And she's out there kind of by herself, and the, the, preg- the pregnant friend and the, the boyfriend are back kind of more towards the, 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 the land. And as she's, you know, as she's kind of wading out there, she kind of goes under. And when she went under, there was a big old, a big old serpent, I'll say, snake, the side of its head. It was, look, it was looking over the, into the deep end. Mm-hmm. And she kind of looked back and goes, where is that? All of a sudden, she feels her arms. Both her arms get pulled backwards. Mm. She gets ripped out of there. And this happened 20 years ago. Yeah, it got ripped back. She said, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. You know, so stories like that that I've heard just growing up, you know, mm-hmm. and hearing, you know, to me, that's crazy. I get goosebumps telling that, you know, because it's just, I've swam in that, the lake and, you know, you see people out there having a good time and, but they really don't know what's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I always have to tell people, you know, you, there's signs, there's different things that you'll hear. You'll hear it before you see it. Yep. And, you know, one thing that I've heard that it does out there is it moves. Just moves. And you'll hear it and be off in the distance a little bit. You know, I've, I've heard that, you know, that it, that's one of the signs where you know it's coming. And there ain't no cows out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a recreation area. There's, you know, all the farmland's out more towards away from the lake. But, you know, I've had friends where they've been out there and said, man, I heard a cow out there. They're in the middle, they're in the middle of the lake. I mean, there's no land in sight. And it's just, they hear it. And they're like, what is that sound? Well, maybe it's, maybe somebody's transporting cattle, you know, off to the side. But you fall a lake is definitely, I mean, it's, pretty uh pretty spooky out there um you know you know i've had multiple relatives just tell just walking you know they're just walking and they're they you know they'd be like a little overpass kind of going off into kind of like a little sidebar area where it's kind of swampy where the shallow water goes off and you know they hear things out there in the water you know and a lot of these stories you know growing up they they tell them one time and that's you know that's the extent of it Yep. You're right on that. You know, uh, you know, the, the thing, uh, I think is, uh, uh, amazing about this topic that you guys brought up, you know, all tribes had, you know, st- stories like this, not only Indian folks, but I always say this, but it, it goes across the board. You even have people across the waters, the oceans, their people have water monsters as well. You know, some of them are great supernatural beings, and some of them are just, they they consider them like old, I don't know what you call it, not artifacts, but like dinosaurs, you know, that mm-hmm. they think, you know, still is staying in this, like, for example, the Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. You know, and those are things that old Indians used to relate to. You know, they say, yeah, you know, there's things in these waters, you know, that that are real, you know. And, and like for Muskogee people, you have to understand uh, where we originated, you know, from that, that coast of Florida, you know, and, and you know, up, up around Alabama and Georgia, you know, and those big waters, you know, that they used to, you know, utilize, you know, they respected that water. They would go give offerings to that water, you know, if they needed to go fishing or or travel on that big water, they would talk to those spirits, you know, and there was other entities in that water that they would call upon sometimes for medicine purposes, you know, and in this story or this this thing, you know, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to, you know, leave it in or take it out. But, you know, um, one of the greatest uh, water beings that the Muscogee believe, you know, is that horn serpent or that horn snake. You know, that horn snake had very strong power. You know, and, and, you know, like I had told you guys before, some of these things we talk about in our medicine songs, mm-hmm. you know. And so these things aren't aren't something to just laugh at or, or make fun of because these things are real for the Muscogee people. And, you know, that, you know, the English name is Horned Serpent, you know. 
and they used to call upon him, you know, when they wanted, you know, real strong medicine, you know, for whatever reason. But you have to remember back in those days, they didn't call upon power like that unless they really needed it. Mm -hmm. You know, not like today, if people knew that they could do this, they would abuse it. You know, and they were told that, you know, you don't abuse this thing because this thing's going to turn on you and going to eat you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how far you go from that water. Like I told you before, if these things want to get you, you know, they're going to they're going to get you. I don't care. You you in the middle of, you know, middle of the United States, you know, clear that you think you're clear away from water. It still can get you. You know, in the same way with this horned serpent, they used to say, you know, if you really needed something, you know, you had to you had to be strong with your medicine and you're strong for whatever you're asking for. You didn't just go out there and I need a new car or I want this woman to love me or, you know, whatever. There, there was other things for that, mm -hmm. you know, but this, you know, this was something that. You called upon him. There was a certain song that you sang to call him. And they said, you know, he would make the earth shake and the sky rumble. He had that much power. And he said, you know, you had to stay strong. If you ran, he would devour you. Mm -hmm. You know, and... They would also say that when you call upon him, you needed to give him a proper offering, you know, a blood offering. Now, when I say that, you know, people that all, uh, all kind of different things, but, you know, you had to give him a life for that. You know, a lot of times they would bring cattle or whatever livestock that they had to feed this thing. And then when it was done, you know, and, you know, everything was right, then he would bow before you. And you only take a, just a clip mm -hmm. of that horn. Mm -hmm. yep. And with that horn, you could do great things, but you better not abuse it. Because if you did, you would be the one that got devoured. And so, like I said, you know, there's many stories about this, about our Muskogee people. You know, and there's lakes that we believe that some of these old ones still reside in. But not only the lakes, but the ocean. And there's a a place that, you know, with the Muscogee people, old ones would tell you, you know, off that coast of Florida, there's a certain area where the oldest one lives. And if you know your history, you hear this area. People lose planes. They lose boats. You know, they lose a lot of things in that Bermuda Triangle. And, you know, but our Muscogee people, those old ones, they would say, tell you that's where the oldest one lives. And, you know, I don't know, you know, if you guys want to leave that in there, but I'll leave that up to you guys because, you know, to, to me, this kind of information does need to be told because a lot of people don't tell these things. They don't honor these things. They don't respect these things. Even this dog <laughs> just recognizes that. You know, she knows. Mm -hmm. She knows when those things are being called upon. You know, so again, you know, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. You know, but I feel like, yeah, yeah, it does need to be said. Because, you know, even our people, and I'm not just talking about Muscogee people, but Indian folks in general, you know, we... We've forgotten about these supernatural beings. We're too busy trying to scare each other with, with these kind of stories. But we don't understand. There's things that you're supposed to get out of these stories. Mm -hmm. You know, teachings. You know, those old Indians always had teachings behind these stories. 
that unfortunately, you know, we're all losing those kind of things. So that I'll leave that up to you guys. I mean, no, yeah, you. It's for sure. You know, that's one thing I, I always, I always ask around, especially with the the storytelling that you guys had over there. I'm just like, man, I'm waiting to hear something. You know, <laughs> you know something, something a little spicy. You know, but you just don't hear those stories anymore. And you know, that's why I'm having. You know, I I I, I collect stories, but at the same time, you know, I you know I I just have just a, a knowledge, you know, just a thirst for knowledge that I, I want to know about these things because. You know, there's been times in my life where, you know, I've been out on the river, Illinois River, and, you know, I guess I'll go ahead and tell the story now, but um, but I've seen, you know, things that just, you know, I'm like, man, I wish I knew more about that so I could, you know, some people were out there, you know, I knew they was messing around, you know, and I could help them out. But uh, if you guys remember back, this is probably 2017 is when that big flood in, on the Illinois River just wiped everything out that summer before that this is this is where this story takes place is the summer before that and uh we're floating along the river this is you know the end of probably the end of, about about the end and and every time i went there was a drowning i always went on sundays and there was always a drowning um or somebody getting pulled into the water by by uh the current is what they would say um and you, and you can look at a lot of this stuff up you know local you know Local newspapers is where your best way to find a lot of this stuff. But uh, I remember like it was, you know, I can remember the kid's face. You know, we were floating along, and there was this little boy playing on this branch, blonde-headed boy. And um, we're floating along, and, you know, we pass him, and, you know, I'm just like, man, that little kid shouldn't be playing on that. You know, just kind of thinking, thinking of, you know, to myself. And we get to this part of the river where it's real shallow, then it's real, real deep. And we're on the shallow end, when I'm, and I'm outside the, the raft, and I look uh, I look up ahead, and I can kind of, because the bend kind of comes around like this, and it goes back that way. Um, it goes to the right, and to the left, and then back to the right. And I look up there, and I'm like, that water's going the, the opposite way. It's, it's not going the, the same way it's supposed to. And so I, I, I'm like, all right, let's get out, let's get out. Like, they're like, what's, you know, I had all, like 15 people with me, two rafts, you know pull them off to the side and, and I'm and they're all busy doing their thing you know because you're on the river you know you're there to have a good time and I look out there and the water one section of the water is going the opposite way and one section of the water is going the normal way and uh, you know I, that little boy ended up drowning that yeah. day yeah. you know I think about that a lot you know I think that's a lot of the reasons why I do tell stories you know sometimes you gotta let me know when, where's the line sometimes you know and I, that does happen uh, don't get me wrong and like I said we but that story it, you know I think about it all the time I, I think I was 22 years old when when that when that happened in 2016 so give or take but he yeah the, the boy drowned and you know there was a lot of drownings that year I mean it was a record then the next summer hit and we had that massive flood mm. and I think that snake a serpent um, I think he was trying to say something you know, because the Illinois River before 2017 was a was a mess. Litter, it was disgusting. The water looked terrible. You know, it just didn't look right. You know, people were drowning cans and bottles, and it just wasn't right. You know, and I I grew up on that river. You know, I'm from Tahlequah, and I I uh, I respect the river. You know, because water's life. You know, it's you know it comes down to it. Um. But that's that next following April, the most massive flood that's ever happened. And I think it was that. I think it, I think it was a snake. He was letting us know, you know, hey, you're you're disrespecting, you know, this river. Yep. I've always noticed that too. Um, flooding always occurs where they're starting to develop areas that have never been developed before, mm -hmm. like untouched land. You know, um, I teach out in Bixby. And um, that community out there has always been just like an old farm community. Mm -hmm. But here in the past, you know, five, ten years, population of that little town has just it's exploded. And always that area gets so flooded out, you know. I think the same thing. I think that's, 
you know, something trying to say, like, say something, you know, like, not necessarily we don't want you here, but what you're doing is you're desecrating our lands, you know, and they got to move. They, they got to, you know, know, you know what I mean? So I've always noticed that, too, about Bixby. Like, it always floods. Like, I've never worked at a school district where we've had more flood days than snow days because <laughs> <laughs> buses can't get through, yeah. cars can't get through, yeah. you know, well, and so – Hakey Creek Park out there. Hakey Creek, yeah. Um, I guess I'll. I mean, I I uh, I work for Tulsa County, and so um, I'm in the parks parks and rec department over there, and and uh, my location's over kind of Bigsby Glenpool, and um, I used to work over. <laughs> hey man, that snag. I know. Had to had to drown it out a little bit. I, I thought that was that quesadilla Quit. you had the other day. <laughs> nah. uh, Quit. That's that evil one. Yeah, <laughs> man, the one that the one that the, the one that gets you. <laughs> well, she's distracted. She's telling you about that bear clan. <laughs> That's right. Uh, she said, "Y'all quit talking about those things." <laughs> I'm gonna have to call upon that bear clan. Man, I, I, I started divulging too much. Huh? Yep, nah, man. She's getting God. on to you now. <laughs> like that. But, but what were you saying? But no, Hakey Creek Park floods all yeah. the time, and. Yeah. You know, that's one thing too that I think with the with the water, you know, aspect of this episode, I just think that a lot of people just you know, it's just the Arkansas River. I'm gonna throw this in there, you know. Mm-hmm. Or hey, you know, this is a barge coming through and it's leaking oil. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And I just you know, it kinda goes back to like I said with the Illinois River, it's the same thing with any river, any body of water. These these entities, these beings, they you know, that's their home, you know. Yeah. It's like coming in. It's like me coming into Russell's house and just peeing on the place. You know, it's just mm-hmm. that's basically what we do. You know, and, and I think that's a, a lot of the reasons why we, I think we've seen an upsurgence of that. Now, not so much. I haven't heard. I haven't been in Tahlequah in a while, but uh, since I graduated from college. But you know, you see it all the time. You know, floods and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're right. You know, uh, like I was saying, you know, and then folks, we had a lot of respect for nature you know and and you know the thing i like about this this podcast you guys are are doing you know is that you know you guys are are talking about these old old ways you know and and one of those old ways was honoring nature whether it was the forest whether it was the land or whether it was the water you know just like russell said you know water gives life but it also can take a life, mm-hmm. and that's to be respected. You know, that's why our people respected these things, because, you know, we were warrior people at one time, and, you know, we honored those kind of things. We knew that, you know, playing around this water wasn't always the best, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the the thing... Not only were there spirits of the water, but there was things in the water mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that had spirits too. You know, just like uh, uh, we had talked about before this show. You know, uh, recorded. You know, uh, we were talking about that Thai snake and the this octopus type entity. You know, that Muscogee people believe. You know, these these both these entities. You know, they'll they'll uh, suck you under under the water they'll tie you up and drown you and they always say you know you know that this thing got a hold of somebody because it only ate certain parts of the body the nose the ears fingertips toe your toes that's all it would eat and it was marking you it was letting you know that they're there you know and those old ones when that would happen you know if that by some chance that did happen they knew what to do to appease that spirit and we don't do that no more you know just like you were saying development you know a lot of places are are developing things and man thinks that we can change the course of a river if we want Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might be able to, but if that river wants to, you know, take back control, it always does. Mm -hmm. You know, there's places that, you know, we we try as human beings to control 
But the creator, you know, he shows us and puts us back in our place. The only thing is that we don't have enough sense to understand. You know, maybe we shouldn't be doing some of these things. Maybe we shouldn't be polluting as bad as we are today. You know, you see people throwing trash out, you know, everywhere. You know, at the lakes, you know, on the roads, you know, out of people's houses. You know, we don't we don't respect nature. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I feel like, you know, that's kind of why, you know, People start to end up missing, you know, mm. these spirits get them, these water beings, you know, ain't going to behave, then, you know, that's the old law, you know, we talked about that Indian law, mm-hmm. you have white man law, then you have Indian law, you know, and that reigned true with every tribe, and so, you know, even that octopus thing, you know, even if you're on a boat, it can take you off. Mm-hmm. It can drown you or it can capsize that whole boat, you know, and that that tie snake, same way, he can take you off that boat. He can drown you, you know, he can do many things. But, you know, they also had a good part of, uh, of their beings, too. You know, they could do some supernatural things for you as well. But you had to know how to talk to it how to feed it Mm -hmm. now all these things had to be fed you know and whether you believe in water monster or not well you know for 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 true that there's an alligator that these snakes that we're naming are real Mm -hmm. you know they're, they're they are out there and but you know again you know that's up to you what you what you want to believe and what you don't want to believe but, you know, as far as I go, you know, I definitely respect all those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what they say, too. I mean, like 90% of our ocean is unexplored. Like, they don't know what's down. I mean, just and that goes for any body of water, you know, major body of water. We don't really know what's in the bottom of Grand Lake, right? Or <laughs> I'm just trying to think of one that's like yeah. a large, you know, like one of the largest ones in the state. Mm-hmm. You know, I know enough not to go down there and i don't want to find out i ain't gonna play around do you remember find out. do you remember we did that inner tribal chat yeah and then james was talking about that serpent yeah yeah in yeah. their lake yeah and then so i forgot what they called it uh, did he say a snake like a giant he said it's snake? like a serpent or something yeah it's like a snake but it's you can like, he said something you can spot it from the road mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. spot it from the road and this is in nevada and um but he said that People like try to look for it and stuff. Like they try to do the expeditions or whatever, and it knows like when they're doing it. And so there's, I guess there's underwater tunnels or something that it goes through to disappear. So they never like find it. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I, I believe that. You know, these things, whether you believe in supernatural abilities, you know, they're out there. You know, and you know. I have to always, you know, of course I'm Muskogee and I, I can't help but, you know, refer to that, you know, you know, but we have a lot of medicine songs that mm-hmm. utilizes that snake, you know, King Snake, mm-hmm. they say, you know, and that's a real serpent, you know, mm-hmm. that's a real snake, you know, but we, we, we talk about that in these medicine songs you know to to uh uh help our people out you know and they're not always to be feared they're just to be respected you know you got to go into their homes you know uh like uh mr tiger said you know you got to be respectful you know you got to go in there in that correct way you know and Unfortunately, you know, we as people, human beings, you know, we don't always respect things like yeah. that. You know, we go in the woods, do what we want to do. We go in that water, do what we want to do. Sometimes we do things that even creator sh- looks at us and goes, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've, always, I've always wondered, too, like uh, Chittaharjo, if, you know, got how he got that name, 
that you know crazy snake and if he was able to call upon and you know that being and use that medicine because they said you know he had real strong medicine yeah that he could even disappear mm. or mm. yeah change his shape you know mm-hmm. and yep. you would think like with that name was there any kind of like connection there well, well at that time you know um when he got that name there was what they call a snake faction uh-huh. you know and they were going against the u.s government you know they were you know and and of course you know he would always uh i don't know how you say he would do some things that would just out out i would mean, just just straight up crazy you know type stuff you know he He'd walk right in the middle of that, you know, uh, uh, military camp, you know, and eat their food, and drink their water, you know, and they wouldn't even see him. And he'd even take rations back to his people, you know, right in front of everybody. And so, you know, that Jitta Harjo, you know, that his name was interpreted as Crazy Snake, you know, that's kind of why, you know, mm-hmm. but... You know, he came from that snake faction. You know, they were out to to uh, fight the U.S. government. You know, they were standing up for the Muscogee people mm-hmm. at that time. And, you know, all those battles that they had, I mean, they were magnificent battles. These was just a group of Indians taking on the U.S. military. You know, and they fought pretty good with them, you know, held their own. And it was just a handful of them, you know. And, and yeah, he had strong medicine because you know back then you know again we talked about this before you know those guys knew what it took took to have medicine you know today you know we we want to be comfortable we want to do everything you know we want to do but you know when you're dealing with that medicine you know there was a way of life you had to you know and he came from those kind of people that knew those things so you know, I, I've got a lot of respect, you know, uh, for him and, and all the things that he had done, you know, because our Muscogee people to even today benefit from those things that he had done, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, uh, I just I, I, I just can't help but say Mado for bringing him up like that. Well, we go back to the whole disrespecting water and stuff. I was one of those idiots. <laughs> but as you grow older, though, you start having a lot of compassion and stuff for the land and water. Because my friend, I, I used to litter all the time, just in general. I used to, like, litter all the time. And then my buddy, my friend was like, dang. We, were, we, went, some, we went to the store. I remember I had a bunch of trash in my car. And then I just, like, gathered it all up. And I just, like, wrote my window down and threw it out. Mm. And she was like, she's like, oh my God, you're a monster. <laughs> it was like a full bag of trash. This was like in New Mexico. And then I was like, I was like, what? You know, because I didn't like, I didn't care. You know, I just like nobody ever like, nobody ever said anything to like educate me on like the hazards of that stuff, like littering or whatever. Because I just seen everybody do it anyways. You know, and like, there's no care in the world. People would just litter all the time. Yep. And then mm-hmm. she was like, she's like, man, that's so messed up that you're just like, you're so eager to just, you know, gather up your trash and just throw it out like on this land. Like, this ain't even your land, dude. Like, this is like the Southwest land. You know, this is the land is like, you don't even know like who was on this land and the history behind it. And I was like, I was, and it, I don't know. It didn't hit me till like later on. I mean, cause like I, I just kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, you know. But then like when I say later on, I mean like later on that day, cause I really started to think about it, like what she was saying, and I was like, dang, that is that is true. Like I've just been like throwing this trash like on this land that was like that's here for us, you know, to grow whatever we need to grow. Or, like, just be here for us, you know? And then, like, there's herbs here. Like, there's tea here. 
and there's like just all kind of things to help us like sustain life and stuff and i was like and then i seen her again and i was like i was like man it wouldn't i think she was from like up north i think but i just said like man i was like i was like you know what i was like uh nobody's like ever said anything about like littering because i just see it all the time and she said yeah she's like so she's like i didn't mean to like get on to you i was like no i was like because you made me really like think about it like you made me like really like look at what you're talking about and dissect it and help me understand that i shouldn't litter and that was dang that was 2011 and i've like never littered since Mm -hmm. then like i never like i just like always gather my trash up in my car like it would be easier to like just throw it out but i do gather it up and i bring it here or whatever and then we try to recycle when we can Mm -hmm. you know but but yeah i just like i don't know man it's really sad too because there's a video on tiktok and there was these people out in the ocean and then they went to like this certain part near this island and like all on that coast man like all on that near the where the island was man there's trash everywhere beer cans like pizza boxes just trash like it was like reaching out to the ocean and Mm. they're like they're like man if humanity could just like stop doing this i don't know man it's just like sad to see too and then like humans are so crazy because rather than just like throwing your stuff away or whatever like properly like trying to i mean there's like a story like a couple years ago maybe a few years back but they're trying to create some kind of some kind of worm to eat trash dang Mm. yeah like to consume trash so they just throw it on the on like this mountain of trash i think it's like an island out in the middle of the ocean or somewhere and there's like out there's an island there and it's just filled with trash and it's getting bigger so that's why they were like um trying to create this Worm or something, graboids. Yeah, man. That's nah, a, that, trimmers, man. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That that's sounds a, scary. <laughs> trimmers boy. ten, y'all. Graboids, man. man. Yeah, we run around. Yeah, sounds like some of y'all too have never uh, grown up with Iron Eyes Cody, and it's starting to show. Yeah, mm. got that tear. Got that yeah. one tear. Yeah. <laughs> I understood that after she told me all that too. Man. I had a tear. <laughs> well, oh you God. know. You know, I think water monster topic is 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 hot. You know, I think, you know, I, I wish um, we had other tribes here because you know, you know, I know a lot, especially up north, you'll hear a lot more water monster stories. You know, down in Arizona, you know, they got water monster stories. You know, uh, every tribe had them. You know, mm-hmm. and. You know, you have to kind of think about, you know, the parts of the United States, you know, that these tribes come from. And uh, this was one that I kind of heard just recently in the past couple of months, I think. I I made a trip to Iowa, and I can't remember, I think it was Marquette, Iowa, over there by Wisconsin. And uh, there were some natives over there. You know, they were just telling us some stories. And I was asking them, you know, about, you know, spooky things and stuff. And, you know, of course, they start talking about what a lot of tribes call underwater panther. Mm. Well, you guys may not have ever heard of that, but mm. I don't know. But, you know, Muskogee people, we had stuff like that, too, underwater panther. But, you know, this was kind of more of a northern Sack and Fox type story. And, um, or it was a northern second fox person that was telling me this story about this area. And, you know, uh, I, I was kind of blown away because the way he was telling this story was that, you know, long time ago when their people, you know, used to work that, that Mississippi River and a couple other rivers that were there, there were beans in that water that would take you out of your canoe and when it take take you out you'd never be found again you know these things would eat you whole and they would say you know they were panthers you know and and uh they would wait for you in the water 
you know, like when you got close to the water to get a drink, they would jump, fly out of that water mm. and get you, you know, and take you off and eat you, you know, and, and they say even, you know, if you were on a canoe, you know, they would be underneath that water and they would jump up, take you out, bring you underneath the water and drag you off and nobody would ever see you ever again. You know, and they said these things were like they had wings. They would fly out of that water and, you know, just get you off that boat or that canoe and take you under the water. And, you know, when he was telling me those stories, you know, some of you guys follow me on uh, Facebook and and a couple of those other things that I'm on. Uh, and I put that Piazza uh, painting on there from uh, St. Louis, you know, and that water monster, you know, he had wings and horns, but he looked like a panther or a bobcat. And so I started to think after hearing that story, and I did kind of a little research, but you know, there are tigers out there, you know, those Bengal tigers. That hunt like that. They'll wait for you in those rivers and take you out like that, you know. And so to me, I said, dang, that makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, those stories got to be true because, you know, if this big cat can do that, I'm sure these other big cats could do that too. But, you know, he was describing those cats that were in that, in that Iowa area at that time. And the way he described them was like saber tooth tigers. You know, they had those long teeth, but you know, these stories were from way back, you know, and you know, these things would jump out of the water. And they say it just looked like he, he had wings or something cause he would fly and, and basically just tackle you, get you Dang. off that boat. So, you know, I, I think about that, you know, all the descriptions that a lot of tribes have of this underwater panther, you know, they, they, they make it sound like a different being. But, you know, to me, you know, when, once you kind of do your research and look at these tigers in India and, you know, other places that these big cats learn how to get you mm. in the water, you know, I say, wow, that's crazy. You know, when you tell them about the you know, underwater panther, have you ever heard anything about, it's like a water bear, but it's like, it, it's as small as like a like a baby turtle, but it grows. You ever heard anything like that? I can't, I mean, I remember growing up, we had some, I, I remember one story about, uh, I had a relative walking down the road, and they looked off over on the pond, and they noticed this little, it was like a turtle, baby turtle on a on a log. And as they got closer to it, it grew. Mm -hmm. And I I can't remember the name of it, what they called it, but something like a water bear or something. You ever heard anything like that? Yes. And um, it actually it had uh, quite a bit of supernatural abilities. You know, just like you were saying, you know, he would he would change from, you know, just a, almost a molecule. You know, like you said, like a little turtle. And then it'd be a big bear. Uh, it had a lot of negative stories, but also positive stories of people utilizing that in a good way, and uh, for also for certain medicines. And so, yes, you know, there, you know, Muskogee's had you know all kinds of crazy stories <laughs> like that, you know, and and so uh, again, you know, especially with bears, you know, we have several uh, supernatural bear type stories one of the most famous one uh i'm not going to give you the indian name for it but i'll give you the english name and it's a uh, ghost bear and this thing when it comes around it brings nothing but sickness and death and you know this is one of those things that they believe lived long time ago you know way back you know, probably like around caveman times, you know, and, you know, it, it roamed this earth, but, you know, it no longer exists, you know, it was killed out, you know, but its spirit's still around, and, 
that one, you know, like I said, you know, all these have different purposes for each, every, every one of them. So there was one I've heard of, of like an Alaska. It's like an otter man or something like that. It's sort of, I guess, similar. Only it's an otter instead of a a bear, which I'm assuming is just because it might be ge- ge- uh, geographic location. Maybe right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's a, sort of a similar story, but it's an otter instead of a bear. So I didn't. You heard that one? I've heard uh, similar uh, type stories like that. You know, with those otters, because. You know, even today, you know, people go hunt those otters and, you know, if you don't stay on top of it, you know, it'll drown, drown your dog, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, there's even videos of that thing, you know, outsmarting those dogs and taking those dogs out, you <laughs> know, so uh, it's it's pretty cool, you know, even even to hear those kind of stories. Yeah. So I've, I've heard similar stuff like that before. Yeah. The Otter Man. Otter Man. You know, I, I I don't know if uh, either one of you got your phones on you, but uh, if you can look this up, uh, and I don't even know how to spell, y'all have to forgive me. I don't, I don't know how to spell. I don't barely spell my own name, but uh, <laughs> they call it Ogie Pogi. I've heard of Ogie Pogi. You know, and and they have a story here in the U.S. about him, and then of course in the Canada area, and. Uh, He's another water monster, but, you know, uh, some of the tribes up there, you know, look at him in different light. You know, Mm -hmm. some look at him in a good way and some, you know, are terrified of him. But, you know, again, you know, this uh, Ogie Pogie uh, creature, you know, is kind of like the Loch Ness Monster, you know. And when you travel up north, you'll hear stories about this this, uh, water monster or water being, you know, and... and, uh, Again, you know, I think that's, you know, pretty cool. You know, if you, you ever get a chance to go to a couple of those lakes up there. Yeah. Does it tell you exactly what lake? Because I've been up there, and right now I can't think of what lake it's at. Let me see that. Oh, dang. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, sorry. And I wish I, and I wish I would have. I, I would have done my research on that, but there was a picture of, of – a. Something similar to look just like that that I've seen here in the last year. It's kind of like a eel looking thing. Now I might be pronouncing it wrong, so Ogopogo. you might Ogopogo. Yeah, or, or, I might butcher this. <laughs> Lake Okanagan. Yes, that's correct. You got okay. it. You got it. And like I said, and there's there's one here in the U.S. You know, and I can't, I know it's up towards Minnesota. You know, they, they believe they have the same name for it because some of those tribes here in the U.S. are in mm-hmm. Canada, so they all have that yeah. mm-hmm. kind of, you know, uh, I guess same language. Forgive me if I got that wrong, but, you know, again, you know, that's what my understanding is. And so, you know, you go to some of these lakes, you know, uh, the especially the Great Lakes area. You know, those tribes up there uh, have a lot of stories. You know, I was... Uh, just a quick uh, one, you know, I went to Lake Erie just a couple of weeks ago while I was in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And, you know, some of the, I don't know how you say, they have people up there uh, kind of like Indian folks up there, you know, and, and uh, their uh, relationships with the Indian folks were, we're good with these certain communities. Now, of course, you know, if you know the history of Ohio, it's pretty sad, you know. They wiped out and removed all Indians in the Ohio area. And uh, so the only thing you have left are a few stories from those original people mm-hmm. in some of these communities. But they talked about Lake Erie, <sighs> you know, how it had water beans that lived in it. And uh, they uh, had a name for it. But, again, you know, they asked me out of respect not to really say it, you know, but it was like a big snake slash fish. Mm. And uh, it would do, you know, it would devour people and, you know, take people off boats. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it kept, you know, it made these big yachts flip over, you know, mm. and, wow. and uh, it 
because you know every now and then you you'll hear about it mm -hmm. but the thing about it is when those people go over they're never to be found again mm -hmm. yeah. and so you know there's got to be something with that you know you know and lake erie's got some big fish in there yeah. so it makes sense to me you know for them to have things like that but you know whether you're on the U.S. side of Lake Erie or you're on the Canadian side of Lake Erie, you know, they got those kind of stories about that water. And, yeah. you know, uh, like I was saying, you know, I, I even made a post about that. You know, I, I thought it was real sad to hear, you know, how all those tribes, you know, in that area were removed, you know. And, and if you hear the stories of the Native people that were there, it's very sad because, you know, they massacred, you know, a lot of them and just left them there, you know, to, you know, and to me that was like, oh, man, that's, that's terrible. It's terrible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you look at those tribes that were there that are, you know, a lot of them are moved to Oklahoma, and they're struggling tribes. They don't have, you know, a lot of those old, old teachings, I guess what you might say, you know. So to me, when they did that, you know, that was very devastating, you know. And that's what really hit me, you know. And I said, you know, I know so-and-so from that tribe, you know, back in Oklahoma. And, you know, I know they're struggling with language and, you know, cultural teachings, you know. So I just thought, wow, that's... That's just mind blowing. I just couldn't help but be sad, you know, thinking about that, you know, and also hearing the the few stories that I heard. And these were stories from non natives that were telling me these native stories that, you know, was handed down in their family from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Whoa. Is there any Pawnee stories? Man, I don't know. We got that Pawnee Lake. I was always like, I've always been like afraid of like water, not like pool water, but like just water out and like at anywhere like, like free even, range water. Like, yeah, like anything, free, like, yeah, like anything could get in it because <laughs> like water. I don't, I don't know what's down there. Like I don't know, yeah. like because I don't. I've never heard like I'm I've heard like Boomer I'm Lake had like a octopus type of monster. I know Boomer. I don't know if that's real or not. But Tinkler, Tinkler had an alligator in there mm -hmm. years mm. ago. Yeah, I heard that. But I'm scared of that bathhouse down there in Pawnee. So <laughs> I, I swam down there one time, God. and then there was a there was like a little snake like cruising by, and I got out. I was like, nope. I'm not <laughs> I remember uh, first. Uh, I had uh, arrived there one summer, I think it was 2012 or something like that, to work mm. work over there. And I was over at youth, and uh, they, I took them uh, to Tulsa to one of these uh, Big Splash, I think that's what it was called then. And none of them Pawnee kids liked it. They said, I said, well, what do y'all like? And they said, bathhouse, bathhouse. <laughs> I talked to uh, the lady that helps me arrange things, and she said, "Yeah, we can make that happen." I said, "All right." So next weekend we went to the bathhouse, the famous bathhouse of Pawnee, <laughs> Pawnee America. And man, there were snakes all yeah. over the place, and they had these uh, little uh, boats that you could pedal, pa paddle on, mm -hmm. and. And they had these diving boards and these little, uh, I don't know what you call it, like slide and uh, a little uh, square thing and right in the middle and snakes everywhere. But, man, those pawnee kids jumping in that water, they'd just be having a heyday. And I said, Mr. Hill, get in here with this. I said, uh-uh. So you, you, you in trouble, you on your own. No. I always have, like, if I dream about pawnee, it's always, like, crazy, like, vivid dreams. Like, I had a dream about it. I don't know if you guys ever had dreams about snakes. But one time I had this dream about this giant snake. And then, um, have you have you ever been to Pawnee? Either yeah, of you? I, I know I, you in have. passing. So going towards a tribe uh, that's east, I think. But there's a bridge called the Green Bridge. And I don't know why. I, I don't even know. Like, I dreamed this, like, 
a few years back and like whenever i dream i dream like vividly like it's real like it's i'm actually there and then uh but i was walking and then like both sides of like where i was walking was flooded and then it was the creek water the black bear creek water that was like flooding it, like everything was like flooding and i was just walking and i was like making it to the bridge and all of a sudden like um i look to my right and there's like this giant like black looked like an anaconda but it was like black and then it was like when the sun hit it it was like it was turning different colors when the sun was hitting it and it was like mm -hmm. swimming along like it wasn't paying attention to me and i was like whoa i was like i didn't know who i was talking to i was just like check that out i was probably talking to myself i was by myself but i was like what the heck and it was like swimming like up the wherever where it was going it was going and i was like I ran like with it and I got to the bridge and then like turned. I forgot which way it turned, but I got to the, I got to the bridge and man, like when they, when I was up on the bridge, like I could see it like fully. And it was like this giant freaking anaconda type snake or whatever. Mm. And then, um, and I was just like amazed because like, I'm always amazed by like, I don't know, like sea monsters or whatever. Or, like, giant crocodiles or giant, like, pythons or whatever. And then, like, I was just watching it. And it was just, like, it was, like, staying in place. Like, it knew I was watching it. And all of a sudden, it just went under the water. And it, like, disappeared. And I woke up. And I woke up and I looked around. I was like, whoa. I was like, that was crazy. And I tried to go back to sleep and, like, see what else could happen. <laughs> but, like, I could, because I couldn't, like, I could. I was like, whoa, I wonder what, ha what happened oh, now. Let me, yeah. let me ask you this real quick. Do you think, I know this is getting off topic a little bit, but mm -hmm. do you think that maybe something, you know, something's trying to tell you something maybe you think with that dream or you think it's just, you're just a mad, like, you know, you just have crazy dreams, you know, what, what do you think that is? I mean, I have like some crazy dreams sometimes and I think it's like, I don't know. I have to dissect them sometimes. Like the ones I, though I have some stupid dreams too, but I have some like crazy vivid ones where I actually like try to write them down. And I try to remember them. And then it's weird because like, or then I have deja vu in my dreams too, where I uh, dream something and then I actually, I'm actually there. Like I'm there like in my dream and it's like, whoa, you know? And I have like dreams about like, like every, like, I don't know, like death. Like I, like I always get stabbed like right here, whether it's glass, whatever, or something happens like to my right side right here. Mm. and then like uh it's been somebody doing that to me or like i fell can you see him and sometimes I, like i've ever... seen one person i'm not gonna name him but i've seen it like it was weird though it was like in a i was somewhere in some parking lot and this person like came up to me and said, hey man what's up you know long time no talk or whatever and they're like yeah cool yeah and it was like really like weird and it was like a dark parking lot and there's like a couple of street lights that worked. All of a sudden, like we just started fighting. And see, at that time, I was like, uh, I was doing MMA and stuff. So I was like, I I snatched him up, and I got him on the ground. And I hit side control, and I was gonna go for Americana and like break his like shoulder, because I was like, I was like, what are you doing? Like I had it in, and then um, I don't know. I think it was like a dream because our coach said like, yeah, if you ever like do something like this, remember their other arm is free and they could grab something. And then like, uh, I was like, man, I was like, what are you doing, dude? And I had him locked up and I was like about to like, t like turn it. And all of a sudden like his hand got free and he grabbed like this, like, I think it was a screwdriver and he stabbed me like right here in my side. Dang. And he just like got up and left. And I was like laying there. I was like, Oh God, I'm dead. And I woke up and I was like, Whoa, it's like, that was crazy. But I mean, like, I don't know. And there's a, like, there was a setting like that. And I seen this person. And I was like, oh, it's going down. <laughs> and I was like, but I was like hoping like for like nothing to happen. But nothing happened. Like, it was cool. You know, but then they say like when you dream about stuff like that, like it's an uh, alternate like universe. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Like, it's so weird to like see that stuff in my dreams. But then, like, you're in that same setting or whatever, and it's, like, totally different outcome. So, it, I don't know, man. It, it's, like, so confusing, but... It's like, what what, what if this went 
Yeah, what if? Yeah, what, what if, if that was like what I was seeing from another me or something? I don't know. Yeah. It's it's, it's right. interesting to think about that stuff too. But like the snake thing, I don't know. It might have been, but that was like pfft, four years ago. No, oh, okay. I mean, but maybe maybe it's because like maybe I see stuff on YouTube too. Well, the reason why I ask is when I was when I was we used to live on Cherokee Nation Reservation out in, T- in Tahlequah, kind of out. You know, I don't know if you get think Stick Ross Mountain Road is, is the road it, it was on. Um, uh, but uh, I had a dream one time of, of a black snake that you described, mm-hmm. it was under the house for real. So that's why I, I had to ask because I was like, man, that's basically what it was. Is, is I was outside playing, and I, I, was a, I was a young kid when this, when this happened, mm-hmm. and uh, went outside and I thought I heard something. This is in my dream. I thought I heard something, and I walked all the way down to the end of the into the tr- into the the trailer and kind of looked down, and there was a snake that, that you just described. And so I just thought it was kind of you know weird that I don't know maybe it's something. I don't know. Hmm. So I asked. Hmm. And you guys dream about it? Nope. I can honestly say I don't don't be dreaming stuff like that. I dream of pandas and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, just real scary. No. No. <laughs> Unicorns. Yeah, I know that. Kung fu pandas and stuff like that. No, it's good. But. I think I had another dream about it, but I can't remember. But that, that one in the creek or whatever, I, like, still remember it. Mm-hmm. I still, like, fully, like, because it just felt like I was there. Yeah. And I was, like, actually seeing it, like, in full. Like, it was, like. 40 50 foot long fat head i mean it was just like and i was like i I wasn't scared i was like i said i was like amazed like i wish i could record this or something you know i don't know it was just like i wasn't afraid of it Mm -hmm. because it didn't pay attention to me when i was but i was near it i was probably like from here to the back of that couch that's how close i was to it running along with it Mm. But it was just swimming. It wasn't even like paying attention to me. So that's why I was like, mm. you know, it's probably it's probably nothing. It's probably just trying to find its way or something. Yeah. I know uh, a lot of tribes that have uh, beliefs and in, in dream interpretations, mm-hmm. and Muskogee's one of them. You know, we we really believe in those symbols and dreams. So, you know, uh, you know those type of things. I think that could be a show to itself. <laughs> yeah, I think so <laughs> yeah, too. Sure. Yeah. But. Yeah. You know, you're talking about, you know, those great big old snakes. You know, there's a lot of stories out there, you know, about big snakes, you know, especially around from Arizona, New Mexico area. They always have those stories of those great big old snakes living on those mesas. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, those tribes down there, you know, they they look upon them in a, in a different light, you know, uh, kind of like supernatural beings, old grandfathers and stuff like that, but... You know, just like like with creeks, you know, those things can help you out or they can be your worst enemy. And so, you know, I like hearing stories about those things, too, especially those ones on those big mesas, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, they say sometimes, you know, you'll run across and they're big as a bus. You know, they're super long and they're huge and, and they've got all kind of power. And so... Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty cool, though. But yeah. You see that? Um, I don't know. There's like a. I don't know if I, I might have sent it to you, but there's like a. These people were digging this giant hole. You might have seen it. You're on TikTok. Yeah. And I then there's like a something moving. In that, there's yeah, okay. something moving inside that like wall. Like they just dug in. It's like this giant. It looks like a snake. Mm-hmm. Like Dang. just like going around. Looks like I guess it's going down. Mm. And they kept digging too. They kept digging. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see what it is. No. <laughs> but I didn't think they seen it. No, yeah, no, because yeah. it was it was like in the the what do they call that? Well, not pay dirt, whatever, whatever the top soil is or whatever. But yeah, they you could see the cr- or the the man. I'm not even I'm not even a construction guy to be. Even yeah, talking. I don't know. Some the type hole? of yeah, some type of <laughs> the that hole like yeah. that way. There was a hole, and on the side of the wall, there's another hole. <laughs> yeah. And so you can see the the machine going down and getting more excavator. Is that what it is? Yeah. Anyways, Tyler. Ah, yeah, sure. 
I'm just yeah. enjoying Tyler's the educated one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but no, but they kept digging, and you could see this thing, whatever it is, it looked like a snake, but mm-hmm. it was you could see it was moving right on the edge of that that where that guy had just scooped yeah Dang. out of. So I don't know what you know. I saw it too. I didn't know what that was. I was like, man, that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. I thought it was crazy a long time ago. You know, like before they had the internet you got today. You know, like when they had uh, Hotmail and all that. Was, Kind of crazy. AOL chat. Is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, AOL <laughs> chat. People be talking about. I remember you in there. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about those uh, big old snakes that was choking on a cow over there in India. Mm, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, they had a big old picture of that thing. He's all jacked up and that cow stuck. And, you know. Dang. I have seen one, though, of like a trying to swallow a deer. Mm. I mean, and I saw it. Like, I mean, that deer's. Did y'all see that yeah. that show where it was like man versus python and the guy pledged that he would get eaten by a python? Oh yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that. Did y'all see that show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he get and, eaten? No, he got his arm in there and he said, "I can't do it." <laughs> He's like, "I can't do it." I mean, cuz I mean, how are you going to get out besides killing a snake? Cut, cut that snake. He had a he was going to put a camera on himself and then get eaten by it. But I think really? he had a lot yeah. I think he had a lot of like um people come after him because it was like they built he the could show possibly up. kill it, like yeah. the snake, because yeah. it wasn't meant to like eat right. a man, I guess. His size. And they built the show up for 55 minutes. Yeah. 50, mm. I, watched 50, I watched it live, and 55 minutes in, they go, he goes, I just can't do it. And I'm just like, uh. this whole build up where he's <laughs> getting ready and he's training. <laughs> like, come on now. Doing push-ups. Yeah, man. just doing, doing the least at the end. Yeah. You know that snake was mad too. <laughs> <laughs> Stole his dinner right there. Know, just gave him McDonald's. <laughs> There's this other video on YouTube. Dan, this is a while back too, like maybe seven years, five, no, six years ago maybe. But I don't know where it was. It's maybe South America, I think. But there was um these like people out like in this area where it's nobody's around or whatever, and um. There's a waterfall, like, where they were swimming at. And all of a sudden, like, this, like, woman starts screaming, like, help, help. And then, like, you can see this hump come up from the water. And it's, like, this giant, like, snake that's wrapping her up. Oh, And it's, like, it looks huge. And they finally, like, get her. Like, they grab her. And it lets go. And then they never see, like, this thing fully. Like, you could just see this hump coming, like, up from the water. But it's wrapping her up. And like constricting her, trying to constrict her, and then they get her out, and like they never see this thing. Like it just goes wherever it went. Like it never comes up. It never like it just like it knew it was like probably gonna get seen or something, so it let go. Dang. And it was so weird because like you could just see that hump. And it's like it's a giant. Like it's a snake, obviously, but it's like a like a giant like like something you've never seen before. Mm. And it's so like weird like to see that. Like it was on YouTube like six years ago, I think. I, I seen those pictures where you know, I guess I don't know where they were at, some Asian country or something. Those guys be falling asleep and I guess they find those snakes and those snakes had eaten that person. Ooh. And they cut those snakes open and of course he comes rolling out. <laughs> still sleeping. He's still he's still staggering around, get up. What? Oh, I'm just kidding. No, but, no that snake ate I? him. <laughs> and they said he had passed out, you know, and you know, that snake come up and Eighty, mm. and I was Hawk, like, "Damn, out. And all that. yeah, <laughs> you're fired, man. <laughs> Time to go home. God. Here's your papers. <laughs> Got eaten. <laughs> you had one job, sir. <laughs> Stay one awake. job. Stay awake. That's crazy. Like you're just asleep, and this snake comes out of nowhere and just eats you. <laughs> man, that's what it is. Four, four or five or something like that. You know, they're not too tall. Yeah. Not to say that that's that. To that's the, all right, but yeah, to know. the snakes, that's lightweight. Yeah. Yep. Well, see, that's why that snake wouldn't eat that guy, or he probably because as those people were saying, like he was too big for that snake to eat. Mm, yeah. Because he he wasn't like that like smaller size of person. He's like six one or something. He like was that. like yeah, jacked. But and, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but yeah, he was just like, and then he was gonna wear a camera in there, like on his head, and he was like, I'm gonna get eaten. And then like, were, were they gonna cut him out too? Like they were yeah, gonna they kill were, that yeah, snake. Yeah, right? they were, they're gonna kill that snake. Like they're not. 
I think they're going to pull would, him out. What would possess you to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get eaten by a snake, man. I'm going to do that live TV. For the views, Chris. For the I views. Guess, the clouds, Chris. I don't know. It didn't work. I know. I mean, I, I mean, I watched that. I watched it live because I was like, man, this guy's about to get eaten. This is going to be, you know, epic. Nah. Didn't happen. Got, got down to the last 55 minutes. Even I mean, they even rolled through the commercial break. Came back for one minute and said, yeah, he just he couldn't do it. Like, <laughs> you know that snake was mad. Yeah. Snake was like, Punk. no. It's my last meal. Like, so you I know, promised. I was thinking about, like you talk about that village with all them people falling asleep. And snakes probably up on that hill. Like mm-hmm. looking at them old people down there like a lobster tank. Like, I'm going to get that one mm-hmm. right there. I'm going to wait for him to fall asleep and they took they I'm took the go. snake back to the zoo no. <laughs> yeah. let me get that one just think of that snake was at one of these tribal complexes how many meals oh, he got boy am I asleep <laughs> wake up be eating <laughs> wake up in that stomach oh, man <laughs> where am I <laughs> touching around oh, no, God. Seeing that snake stomach <laughs> <laughs> Like a cartoon, <laughs> yeah, like a cartoon. <laughs> Those legs. <laughs> Help. <laughs> so I think he got ate by a snake, but that I don't snake, know. I think this rolls over. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> That's Otter Man. Dang no, man. just got ate by a snake. <laughs> <laughs> It's the IHS facility. <laughs> you gotta wait. You gotta wait all day to get seen. I know. Sir. You go up, go up to the ER and somebody laying there with snake. What's a snake doing up here? <laughs> Old boys in there. So waiting, he, in, he, waiting there ten days. He, he, he got in here and walk in. That snake was at his feet, but now I already covered him up. By the time the doctor seen him, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my just God. imagine somebody in there with a snake on their waist like <laughs> like a sleeping sitting, bag yeah like a sleeping bag <laughs> they said sir what's wrong <laughs> I'm like a, mer- a, mer- a mermaid right now <laughs> the snake's just slowly snake mermaid. going up yeah. help <laughs> and they sir still fill like- this paperwork <laughs> out <laughs> Do you have your CEIB? Yeah. What's your chart number? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta know your chart number. We'll see you in a minute. All day. <laughs> Up to here. Will you take a will you take a <laughs> when you get seen? Just your eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking up. And it'd be rude too. Like, please, please sit down, sir. Now what were you doing? <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> What's going on with you? <laughs> He said, well, I got drunk on fry bread grease. (laughs) Hot dog water. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, man. Snakes. There is one they found underground. It's like an older picture. I don't know if you've seen it. But it's an actual, like, bulldozer, I think, holding it up. And they said it's, like, 30 feet long or something. Let me find it real quick. But everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh... Check out, check us out on Instagram, Unsolved, Reserva- Unsolved Mysteries of the Reservation. And if you guys want to plug up yours. Yeah, I'm uh, Tyler Randall at Skoden Cinema. I do have a new episode coming out, I promise. I'm still working on it, but it's about half recorded. But yeah, I'm working on it. But And I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm here. You hold a tiger. Yeah, that's it. You can, you can add me on Facebook. That's about it, though. <laughs> Mystery. And then I can't remember Chris's. He went to the bathroom. This is Chris underscore Honka underscore Hill. Yeah. On Instagram. Just search Chris Hill on yeah. Instagram. You'll find him. Yeah, you'll find He's him. He's got a million followers. <laughs> and then uh, check me out, Russellmus49 and Okie Podcast. So stay spooky. Water, cover, mind, dark, dark.